Vice President Dick Cheney and others from the Bush administration continue to assert that their tactics, including torture, were appropriate and effective. I don't think we should let only one side define history. How did we get to a point where the White House could say, if we tell you to do it, even if it breaks the law, it's all right because we're above the law? Well, Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas dismissed the idea of a nonpartisan inquiry. To me, the idea that this so-called Truth Commission would somehow resolve uh, the good faith disagreements that I think uh, m many of us have had and have divided the country over this subject is, I think, just uh, asking us to believe in the tooth fairy. Wow. Well, Joan Walsh is editor of Salon and David Ripkins, a former Reagan Justice Department official who testified at today's hearing. Joan, uh, John Cornyn is a fairly reliable defender of all things Bush, being the Texas right. senator. What did you make of his denial that there's any chance for a truly just Truth and Reconciliation Commission that looks into uh, bad behavior by the pre previous administration? You know, I just don't buy it, Chris. I think that there is a way to do it. Our Mark Benjamin has been on top of this story going back to August, has interviewed a ton of experts. Nobody says it'll be easy, but people say it's possible. They say it should be nonpartisan. They say members of Congress shouldn't do it themselves because there is the possibility for too much partisan, um, you know, playing to the cameras, etc. They say that it should be separate from the idea of prosecutions and that they should probably just punt on the idea of prosecutions prosecutions. Leave that for the Justice Department. If wrongdoing is uncovered, figure that out later. Many, if not most people, don't think there should be immunity. People on the right and the left think that for different reasons. Um, but, but most people think that immunity isn't, isn't terribly uh, useful. The Church Committee, for example, never had to give one grant of immunity. It didn't get the big shots. And the, the little shots were pretty convinced that they wouldn't be prosecuted if they told the truth. So there are lots of ways to do it. Everything we do in our society, Chris, our conversation here today is predicated on, the, on uh, the belief that there's some basis, there's some kind of factual basis to go forward. And I think, you know, Senator Leahy made the point. We cannot believe that the president is above the law. I feel like I'm young and back in the Nixon administration. If the president does well, it, it's not illegal. We don't believe that. David We're Ripken, what, do you, what would be the problem with a thorough investigation? as to whether this previous administration broke the law with regard to torture, wiretapping, etc. Chris, it's a fair question. Let me give you my answer. Let's set aside the debate about whether or not the policies of the last administration were horrible enough to warrant this kind of investigation. Let's set it entirely aside. In my view, and I think they're compelling arguments that privatizing what is essentially a law enforcement function is fundamentally unconstitutional, fundamentally unprecedented. There's an irony here. Law enforcement gets driven from a constitutional perspective either by the executive branch operating in a constitutionally and statutorily constrained way or by Congress exercising its oversight function. Privatizing law enforcement, which this commission would do, would, if would in not. effect, excuse me, let me finish. Privatizing law enforcement would violate due process rights of the individual and a slew of a constitutional provision. What's ironic here is the Bush administration has been accused of violating the rights of aliens overseas. Here we're talking about running roughshod of the rights of individuals who are American citizens. So it's the process that's wrong, and that's what I said to Chairman Leahy and others. It is your job to investigate. If you want to investigate it 20 more times, fine. Have a Justice Department, Public Integrity Division, and National Security Division do it. This is extra constitutional. This is fundamentally abhorrent to our system. And this is done, frankly, for reasons that people want okay. to escape political accountability in doing this. What's wrong, both of you, starting with John, with a rigorous use of the, of the judiciary? process to go after criminal behavior if there has been any with regard to the points we made torture wiretapping surveillance etc etc anything to do with the war effort that was illegal what's wrong with having the Justice Department under Eric Holder do the job they're supposed to do enforce the law well, punish the guilty what's no wrong problem. with that I think, I think that I, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, Chris. I think one of the things that's going on here is that the Obama administration has not said whether it's willing to do that. And in fact, President Obama, like it or not, has seemed to indicate that he would rather look forward than back. So you've got Pat Leahy and the senators exercising their own prerogative to say, we would like to get to the bottom of this if the Justice Department is too busy or doesn't think it's important or whatever. We would like to have a fact-finding commission. And I want to say Why to David, can't the Senate Judiciary Committee no, do it? 
Why can they I, didn't? The finish? Watergate committee they, did it with Nixon. Why can't a Senate committee, a special committee, do this thing you want them to do? Which I think is a good they, idea. Yep. They could. I mean, they could. They're, they're, at this point, they may. They're still. They're looking at what to do. They're. They're. T they're taking advice even from people like David. But the point I want to make to respond to David is, it isn't necessarily outsourcing a law enforcement action. It's not necessarily a law enforcement action. David is jumping to the conclusion, which I'm not necessarily, that laws were broken. We think they were. But this is a fact-finding commission, so it's no, not okay. privatizing law enforcement. No, let me, let me tell you very briefly. If it if it quacks like it and walks like a duck, it's a duck. But you have a body which is tasked with looking at the applicability of criminal laws. And remember, there are criminal laws in the books banning torture and dealing with wireless surveillance. Looking at a finite number of individuals, looking whether or not they broke the law, it is called a criminal investigation. Any it is aspect not of called criminal, a criminal investigation. No, in it's your not. Universe, you're a lawyer. I can't your believe universe, you're saying this. In your universe, it may not be called that. But I can assure you, the prosecutorial decisions don't just include indictment. It includes selecting targets. It includes allocating resources. It includes deciding on immunity issues. It deciding on subpoena issues. We have never in American history privatized both types of decisions to private individuals not operating okay. within the context of our constitutional David, system. David, are you I think concerned the by this? Commission is a good example. Let me the first of all say that two-thirds of the American people in a recent poll say they want to see some sort of investigation as to right. why the Bush administration committed war crimes. Forty-some percent say it should be a criminal investigation. That added to the people who just want it to be some softer kind of truth and reconciliation, non-criminal investigation. But let me take you here. Former Vice President Dick Cheney was asked uh, by Chris Wallace, if the president during war decides to do something to protect the country, is it legal? Cheney, general proposition, I'd say yes. You take the oath to support and defend and protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. There's no question about what your responsibilities are in that regard. And again, I think there are, uh, the, it's as if he's saying, Everything's legal if it's in the defense of the country. Uh, Chris, uh, first of I, all, it's an it's a overly broad statement. He is not a lawyer. I would say to you the following. It is absolutely not true. It's Nixonian to say that everything president does is well, legal. Well, doesn't that suggest but, oh, the but, need but, for an investigation but, as to what he did given that uh, mindset? By the same token, a lot of a president has formidable constitutional powers. But let me stipulate, I have nothing against an investigation, preliminary investigation in private, as most things are done, driven by career, and I emphasize with career people at the judge this department. Think about it for a second. The, the Bush administration was slammed for having politicized law <coughs> enforcement. Do you really want political appointees of one administration investigating political appointees of another? I would absolutely stipulate in this program that if a career people in the Justice Department decide to prosecute, I would think it's regrettable, but I see no constitutional and policy problems. Okay. The commission is a different animal entirely. Here's the moral inequality in that. Look at the past administration and the way they disgraced and dishonored people like Max Cleland and their honor and their patriotism. They had no problem doing that in public and national television and, and Georgia television advertising. They didn't have any sensitivity about people's patriotism or their reputations. So there's a little inequality here in this sense of justice. Anyway, thank you.